Welcome back to another Pico Gym workout challenge write-up video. In this video, we'll be walking through the reverse engineering challenge, Arm Assembly Zero. Let's get into it. What integer does this program print with arguments 411 whatever and 116 whatever? File, chow.s, flag format, Pico, CTF, and then, okay, so we're gonna wrap the solution in the Pico CTF flag format and then hex lowercase no zero x and 32 bits and then they give an example here all right so i have the challenge file open over here and as you can see it's arm assembly it's pretty different from your standard assembly challenge so it did take some research in order to figure out how it works now i know that after solving it i know that uh, there's not very many solutions online for this challenge so hopefully I can provide a better and more clear solution for the challenge for you guys to understand. Okay, so let's take a look at it. So what we're interested in, of course, is the main execution down here, because this is what's going to be executed first. And then it's setting up the stack and stuff here. That's what STP is doing. I can't remember exactly what STP does, but that's not too pertinent here. What we're interested in is the X0 registers and this LDR, I think, is where it starts it. So this would be like arg0, essentially. In fact, this whole chunk would be like setting up the arg0, which is, if you don't know, arg0, when you're talking in reference to like a command line in Linux, that's going to be the executable itself you're running. None of the arguments that follow it is going to be the executable itself. It's considered an argument. It's considered the first argument, technically. And then X0 is a 64-bit register. And now we're saying add X0, X0, 8. So it's basically going to increment the X0 register by 8 bytes, which is going to place it at arg1. Now we're getting into our first argument. So that's going to be 411 whatever, right? Well, not quite yet, because we actually have to load that value into X0. So right here, it's saying, hey, load into X0 the value at X0, because it's not technically loaded yet, right? It's not loaded onto the register. It's just there in memory. So we need to go ahead and say, hey, this is going to be this value. Now, remember, when you're passing it in from the command line, it's going to be a string. So we need to kind of represent it as a string. And then here we have a to i, which is ASCII to integer. So here's where it's actually converting this to an integer. But then it's moving w0 into w19. So now w19, and actually I meant to do semicolons because those are actually what are comments. So let me go ahead and exchange those out. So w0 is the lower 32 bits of x0 so it's still referring to the same register it's just the lower half of it okay so w19 is going to be equal to the integer value of 411 whatever because remember it converted it to an integer here in fact i need to put x0 equals this right here there we go all right, so now we're loading into X0 this, and then we're adding X0 16. So now we're skipping forward and we're doing arg2. So we're adding eight bytes, which is going to be our second argument, so our second number. So we're doing the same thing over again, which is just placing this value inside of X0. Now, keep in mind, our previous value is still there but it's like at the beginning of X0. So it's now been shifted to the upper 32 bits of X0. So this is going to look something like this now. Okay, if that makes sense, it's just going to have both of these values stored in it now. So then we're doing another ASCII to integer conversion, and then we're moving W0. So remember, our second argument has replaced the lower 32 bits. So now our W0 is equal to that. Well, the integer version of that. So W1 is now equal to this. Okay, and now we're moving W19 into W0. And we know that W19 is our first argument. That means W0 is equal to our first argument. 
Now, I know I kind of glossed over this, but all it's doing is kind of loading up the address space required for essentially the shift. I believe that's all it's doing anyways. I actually believe that this is emptying out that space so that we can store arg2. Yeah, I think that's what it's doing. Yeah, so actually, if this is emptying out that space, then this isn't actually what x0 would look like. It would actually look like this because it emptied out its w0 or zeroed out. So that's also a possibility. I'm not quite sure on that, but we'll just put the first number in parentheses. I think it is emptying out, but we'll just put it in parentheses just in case it is still there. I'm still not entirely sure how this operates, but I was able to figure out enough to figure out the solution to the challenge. So let's keep moving forward. So here we're calling func1. So let's go ahead and go up to that. Remember w1 is our second parameter and w0 is our first parameter, okay? So here we're creating some space on the stack and then W0 is getting stored. Now the STR means store where LDR is taking a value and loading it into a register. Store is taking a register and storing it on the stack. What this means is SP12 is equal to W0, which we know to be our first argument. And then W1, which we know to be our second argument is being stored in SP8. So let's see, I'll grab that. All right, now we're taking SP12 and loading it into W1. So it's doing a flip flop. So now W1 is equal to our second value and W0 is equal to our, oh, sorry, W1 is equal to our, I think I said that right. I just copied and pasted the wrong number. So W1 is our first argument and W0 is our second argument. Okay. So now we're comparing the two and BLS means jump if less than or the same essentially to dot L2. Well, remember it flip flopped, right? So it exchanged the values from between the two registers. So W1 is actually our larger value and W0 is our lesser value. So it's not going to jump to dot L2, which would be right here. It's actually going to just go to this LDR W0 and then SP12. So now W0 is going to be also our larger value. So now the second value is just completely gone because now both W1 and W0 are our larger value or our first argument into the program. So we come back out, right? Cause it just returns after that. Oh wait, no, sorry. We jump to L3 and then L3 just returns. It adds back in that stack space that it subtracted before. And we're, yeah, it's basically going back to where we were before. So now we're moving W0 into W1. Okay. Well, we kind of already did that. So both W1 and W0 are our larger values. So let's go ahead and just write that out here just for safe reference. All right. So ADRP acts kind of like LDR, but it'll broaden the scope of it, say for like a function, which is calling right here, which is dot LC zero. As we can see dot LC zero, we can see the intent here. It's to print a result and it's going to print our number. Now, that being said, if we go to the next line where it says add X zero X zero and then L, O 12 that's saying basically encode the value of dot LC zero and then print it out. LO one, two, I think is bits 11 to zero. So I I'm guessing it's trying to grab the entirety of this string rather than maybe there's other stuff in there that it like maybe these produce values that it doesn't want. It just wants this. And then the percent LD, I think will take from the lowest register or like the first register, which we know to be X zero or W zero. So it's going to print out whatever's in that integer. So we know that W zero is going to be our larger integer. So basically it's just printing out result. And then our larger integer, I think. That did not copy like I wanted it to. So copy paste. All right. Okay. I know that was a bit confusing, but 
hopefully it made sense to you. And then everything else is just doing cleanup work, right? So just zeroing out the registers and all that good stuff. Clearing out the address space. Just so there's no leaks, I guess. And all that jazz. I think the result is... I mean, I think the flag is going to be Pico CTF wrapping the larger integer. But remember, we need to convert it to hex. So I have my Kali box here. And all we're going to do is run Python. And then we're just going to convert our large value to hex. And we get this OX value. And well, you just need these last bit here, right? Because we don't want the OX. So it should be Pico CTF. And then F51E846F. And finally, let's submit it. And there you go. All right. If you enjoyed the video, drop a like and subscribe to the channel to show your support. Turn on post notifications to get regular injections of cyber content directly into your feed. Check out our Patreon, join our Discord, and follow us on Twitter. Links in the description box down below. And leave any feedback or questions in the comments section down below. This is Almond Milk. Thanks for watching. Goodbye, world.